Question number 17, I went to do a bit of correction on the question that we did, question number 8 of section A. The question was um, on similarity and enlargement. When you talk about similarity and enlargement, like now the question was talking about the volume, you are given two similar soils of um, area of 352, you are given the areas of 352, 352 centimeters square and another one of 792 of 792 792 centimeters square those the, were the areas you were given and therefore you could be able to find the area scale factor area scale factor area scale factor it is area of the image or of area of the object I said that you put that in your calculator in your calculator and then in fraction form you simplify in improper fraction you get it as 9 over 4 you get it as 9 over 4 now after getting it as 9 over 4 you find the linear scale factor linear scale factor from there linear scale factor and the linear scale factor is the square root of uh, the square root of uh, the area scale factor that is 9 over 4 square root and this was to give you 3 over 2 3 over 2 now, after getting 3 over 2 as, as the square root, 3 over 2. Now, remember this is the linear scale factor. Uh, the mistake I made is that um, when you get the linear scale factor, and we are talking about the mass, because you ask that you find if the mass of the smaller solid is 1,408 gram, you find the mass of the larger solid. For you to deal with the mass, you relate with the volume scale factor and not linear scale factor as I did. And therefore, we need to find the volume scale factor for us to relate, to relate with mass. When you are relating with mass, use the volume scale factor. So volume scale factor, we want to cube the linear scale factor. And this, um, three cubed, you get, uh, three cubed, you get, 3 cubed you get 27, uh, 2 cubed you get 8, and therefore that means now I relate and say 27, 27 all over 8 equals 2, the volume, I mean the mass of the, the mass of the larger which we don't know and that is what we are looking for, x all over the mass of the smaller which is 14, 0, 8. Now 1408 we cross multiply, so that means 8x. 8x gives us 8x gives us 27 times 1408. So we divide by 8 to get x. So from there you multiply, you divide by 8 to get your x. If you multiply 27 times 1408. 27 times 1408 just use your calculator and say 27 27 times 1408 1408 27 times 1408 uh, you get that 8 this gives that 8 that 8016 that 8016 then we divided by we divided by eight. That eight zero sixteen we divide by eight. Uh, we divide by eight. Then you get forty seven. Forty seven. Forty seven. Forty seven fifty two grams. So that is the mass of the larger, of the larger solid. So that is how we do when you are dealing with mass. And you are dealing with linear scale factor and area scale factor. You have to consider mass. You consider with the volume scale factor and not linear scale factor, as I said in question number eight of section A. Now we proceed now to to the work of the day. That is section B. I start with question number seventeen. If you are given a question uh, like this one, where you are given the masses. Or you are given, in this case, uh, you are given the lengths in centimeters of pencils, the lengths in centimeters of pencils, and then of a, in a class 
in a certain day they, they were recorded as three, seven, nine, all these. Then you ask that uh, using a class of three, three of widget three, so you are given the widget to use. Sometimes you may not be given the widget to use, but in this case you are given the widget to use. So you are told the widget to use as a three, and you are told that you start with the shortest length. Of course, you have to start with the shortest length. You make a frequency distribution table. So the frequency distribution table, they want us to find the class that is the, the length. Uh, uh, we need to find the length. The length as our class. I can make it in vertical. Length, I can call it class, that is. In bracket, I can call it a class. Or even if you write just length, remember it is in what? Length is in centimeters. So that is the length is in centimeters. So from the length, I need to get... The two marks requires to find the length and the, and the frequency. The frequency, that is the number. The number. The number, that's how many they were frequency. So we needed the frequency. So... So the length, I can start with three, you've been told you start with the smallest, and the smallest in this case, if you look around, you have to get it is three. So three, and the width is three. So if the width is three, and the lowest is three, so that means, uh, remember, I start with the first one up to, maybe if I go up to four, the next one must start from five, because four you cannot count it twice. So what you do, uh, you think of the lower limit here, remember this three, uh, the lower limit here is 2.5 because the least unit of measurement is 1, now the absolute error is 0 0.1, so with, I mean 0 0.5, we subtract 0 0.5, we get 2.5. So if you have 2.5, 2.5, if we add 3, it will give us to 5.5. So the upper limit for this one is 5.5, meaning the class that's from 3 to to, to 5, because if it is to 5, the upper limit now becomes 5.5. Now the next must start from 6, 6, up to, up to, now remember, uh, the, the lower here is 5.5, if you add 3, it's 8.5, so it's up to 8. The next starts from 9, the lower here is 8.5, 8.5, you add 3, gives you 8.5, if you add 3, it gives you 11.5, so it is 9 to 11. And then the next must start from 12. Remember this 11.5 plus 5, uh, plus 3, 11.5 plus 3 is 14. 11.5, that is 11 plus 3 is 14.5. Uh, so the lower is 14, that is the upper limit is 14. The upper, the class is from 12 to 14. So the next must start from 15. 15. Remember the lower is 14.5 plus 3 is 17.5. So it is 15 to 17. And then finally the next must start from 18. Because you look here, you look at your table, at the, 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 the length you have here, the maximum is, um, the, the lowest is that and the maximum is... Um, the maximum is 20. The maximum is 20. So it is 18. Uh, remember, I'm moving to 2. So the, this is 17.5 uh, uh, plus 3 give you 20.5. So it is 18 to 20. Now you count how many they are. Like 3 to 5, how many they are? This is 1. Up to 5. 1. 1. 2. 3, because 5 is inclusive, 3, 3, 3, um, the one is 3, the one is 3, it was supposed to be 9. That was supposed to be nine. So um, here, <coughs> three and then six to eight, you count how many they are. Six to eight, this is one. One, six to eight, 
टू थ्री 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 सिक्स टू एफ इज टूर थ्री फोर फोर फाइव सिक्स सिक्स टू एट सिक्स सिक्स Six, six to eight. Uh, just go around. We are at so far at six. We have counted six of them. You look whether there is another number between six and eight. Six of them. Seven. 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 Six to eight, seven, 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 seven. Six to eight. Uh, uh, they were. This one uh, is supposed to be eight here. Now we have seven, eight. So we shall have eight here. There are eight of them. Then you count nine to eleven. If you count nine to eleven, you find them to be thirteen. You count 12 to 14, you proceed with the same that I've done from above. 12 to 14, you find them to be 10. You find 15 and 17, you'll find them to be 4. You count 18 to 20, you find them to be 12. So that means we can have a sum of frequency, sum of frequency to be equal to 40. Uh, sum of frequency, you need to add all of them. The sum of that frequency, if you add all of them, you'll find it to be 40. This is what is going to give you 2 max. This is, whatever you've done here is what is going to give you 2 max. But if you proceed with the question, you realize that we are asking to find the mean and the median. If you are asking to find the mean and the median, now you think of uh, what you do on your table. You can include what you want now on the table, but for the two marks you are done. Now you continue for the rest for you to find the mean. For you to find for you to find the mean. For you to find the mean, now I need to find an X, the median. Then after finding an X, I need an FX for me to find the mean. Now because because I'm drawing also a histogram, so I need to think of what the question is asking. You read the whole question and understand what it's asking so that you manipulate your table. So I need the midpoint, I need the fx for me to find the mean. I also need uh, to find the cumulative frequency so that I can be able to you to find where the median class lies. The median class lies, so I need the cumulative frequency, cumulative frequency. I can also uh, find what we call the upper limits. I can also have the upper limits. Upper limits. That is to enable me. Remember, when you are drawing the histogram, you start with the lower. Uh, so you will have to start with 2.5. So the upper limit, because I said here, we have a uh, uh, list, I mean, absolute error of 0 0.5. So the upper is 5.5. Next class is 8.5. Remember the class we did is uniform of 3, uh, the next class is 11.5, the next class is 14.5, the next class is 17.5, and the final is 20.5. So those are the upper limits. You will use them to draw the histogram. Cumulative frequency is that with 3. 3 plus 8 you get... 3 plus 8, you get 11. 3 plus 8, you get 11. 11 plus 13, you get 24. 24 plus 10, you get 34. 34 plus 3, you get 34 plus 3. 34 plus 3, you get 38. 
18 to 20, there were two, not 12, there were two. 18 to 20, there were two. So that here we have two, and therefore, I mean, a 40 now, the, the last one is 40. No, we have 40 here. Because it's 38 plus 2, you get 40. So we have 40 here. That is the cumulative frequency. Now we are talking about um, x. 8 plus 5 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. So x is that which is 4. This gives you 14 divided by 2 is 7. You get this is 20 divided by 2, you get is 10. That's the midpoint is 13. Next is uh, 17. 16. 16. Yes, 16. That's uh, you add that, and finally it is 19. Finally, it is 19. Fx is this, and this gives you 12. This gives you 56. This gives you 130. And that. This gives you 132. <laughs> you can also have 130. This gives you 16 times 4, you get 64. And finally, 19 times 2, you get 38. We need to find the summation of fx, summation of f x, which is equal to, just add all this, you get it to be 430. From there now, section B, you are supposed to, you are able now to answer part B, the mean, the mean, find the mean, equals to summation, summation of fx, summation of fx, all over summation of f. Our fx summation is 430 divided by 40. This gives you 10.75. 10.75. Remember that you are dealing with the lengths which are in centimeters. Lengths which are in centimeters. So, and then part C. Part C, I mean part two of uh, this is part two Roman one, and then Roman two of part uh, Roman two. Roman two of part uh, B, we are asking about median. Median. Median, I say equals to the lower limit of the median class plus brackets that is cumulative frequency all over total frequency all over two because median median is middle so it's divided by two minus cumulative frequency above the median class cumulative frequency above the median class here i mean cumulative frequency above the median class all over frequency of the median class frequency of the median class then times the class interval or times the class width now the lower um, Median class, where does it lie? So to get the median class, it is a half. Median class is a half of the cumulative frequency is 40. So it lies on the 20th, on the cumulative frequency of the 20th there. So you come cumulative frequency 20th, it will be here. So this becomes my median class. This is my median class. Now the lower limit of the median class is 8.5. So the median equals to 8.5. 8.5 plus you have cumulative frequency 40 divided by 2 is 20 20 minus cumulative frequency above this median class this is my median class cumulative frequency above is 11 so you minus 11 all over frequency of the median class frequency of this median class is 13 divided by 13 then times class interval is 3. So what you get if you do all this, you do that calculation, you find it to be to be uh, 10.58 centimeters because 10.58 centimeters, 10.58 centimeters.
eight centimeters. So you do this one, you'll get it at 10.58 centimeters. So that is how we do the, that is how we do the median of a question. That's how we find the median. So you need to know that, um, now let me continue with uh, doing the, the rest of the question, that is uh, to draw the histogram. How to draw the histogram? The histogram, I use this upper limit at the x-axis and the cumulative, I mean, and the frequency, not cumulative frequency, but the frequency on the y-axis. And the reason that I use the uh, frequency on the y-axis is because here we do, the class we did is three. The class we did is three for all of them. If the class we did were not same, then I could have used what we call frequency density. Like I did from my previous examples, from my previous prediction, a question with the, um, that is using frequency density, whereby um, the, the class widths are not uniform, they are differing. If they differ, you use frequency density, and the frequency density is equal to frequency all over the class interval. Frequency all over the class interval for you to get the uh, frequency density. So, but for this one, because the class are uniform, the class are uniform, so I will use 5.5, 8.5, 11.5 for all of them, for all the classes and their frequencies as they are there and their frequencies as they are there to draw the histogram this one all bars must be uniform for this question all bars are uniform all bars are uniform but uh, in the other one where the class widths are not uh, same so the bars will not be uniform they will differ the bars will differ and therefore uh, what I do now to draw the histogram in this case um, like I've said we use, uh, I use, uh, I use now, just need to, I remember these are 5.5, five, so if I use from here, I can use a different color. Let me use a different color to draw those lines, the X and the Y axis. Mm -hmm. So if I use like this color, if I use like uh, this one, draw the X and Y axis, and then if this is my Y axis, let me have it. Remember, on this x y axis the frequencies were between 3 and the highest was 13 so if the highest is 13 i think of a scale so on this i can start with the zero that is on the y axis i can start with the zero here then if i move 5 5 um because up to 13 this is 5 10 and then i go 15 Okay, it might look small, or if I go, these are five, uh, this is uh, five, ten of them to represent five, so if I have ten here to represent five, another ten, another ten to represent five, so it becomes ten, another ten to represent five, it becomes fifteen, I can use the y-axis that scale, and then the x-axis, you think of a good scale, the x-axis for each, now that we have a constant, we have a constant, the, the lower limit, I start with the lower limit of the first class, which is 2.5. So here it should be 2.5. There is no need of breaking 2.5. So next, upper limit, I use the, them to be 5.5. Five. Here they are 5 already. If 5.5, five, five, I go, the next is 5.5. Um, because if you add 3, you get 5.5. 5.5 the next it will be 5.5 um, the next is 8.5 just the upper limits next is 11.5 uh, <laughs> next is 14.5 next is 17.5 
Next is um, 20.5, that is the last one, 20.5. Now, for between 2.5 and 5.5, the frequency was 3. So because these are how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So each of them represent 2. Each of them represents 2. Because uh, that means if uh, 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 2, I mean 1, 2, if... Uh, 10 is equals to 5. 10 small 10 equals to 5. So that means 1 is what? It's 1 times 10 divided by 2. Each represents 2. So each represents 2. So this is 2. It's supposed to be H. Okay, what about what about 10 represent 5? What about 1? One represent what? One times five, five over ten. That is five over ten. Five divided by ten is a half or zero point five. So each represents zero point five. One represents zero point five. So if one equals two, zero point five. One what about three? So it's three times two, six. So three will represent will be that is three divided by half. 3 divided by half, so it is like times 2, all of them, uh, all the numbers that we'll be dealing with will multiply by 2 to know how many small square. So we'll have to count 6 to be 3. This is 5, 3 will be on the 6th here, 6th here, so on the 6th, on the 6th here, yes, so... That is it. So th those are three. Now when we talk about next now, between five, between 5.5 and 8.5, the frequency is eight, so 16 of them. Frequency is eight, so we count 16 of them. 16 of them will be, remember this is 10, 15, 16 is up to here. So use your scale properly and know how to deal with the bars as per your scale. So this is 8. Now, between 8.5 and 11.5, 8.5 and 11.5, the frequency is 13. 13 times 2 is 26. So 26 small boxes, 26 small boxes uh, on the vertical. So these are already 20, 25, so 26 will be, this is 25, 26 will be here. So from there, we just make that bar. Good. Then from there, the next is uh, between 11.5 and 14.5, the frequency is 10. For 10, it is direct here. 10, it has no issue. It is direct there because these are uniform. The widths are three, so you don't struggle. The next is uh, between 14.5 and 17.5, the frequency is four. So eight of four times two is eight, eight of them. Uh, eight of them, this is five. Uh, five, six, seven, eight is up to here. Now between 17.5 and 20, it is two, that is four of them, four small squares that will give up to this point. So that is how you use your scale. Then you do the histogram. This is the histogram, and then you score, you score your max. You score your max. Now you score your three max for drawing this. So that is how we draw the histogram. And uh, it's good that you note that uh, if uh, the class widths are not similar, you use um, frequency density on the y-axis against the upper limits on the x-axis. The upper limits, remember sometimes, if you are given a class, like I said, I explained from my videos, if you have like two to, if we talk about a class like two to three, 
and the three now starts here to four, I'm at, uh, to four, let me say something of the kind. So in these, the upper limits are just three, four, and all that. There are no limits in this case. So you must remember that. That's how you do it. Now we go to our next question. Our next question, number 18. Number 18 is talking about um, measurement. Now here, if you are given a question like this one, the figure below shows a model of a storage tank. Uh, a storage tank is made up of a conical top. There is a conical top. This is a conical top. Hemispherical bottom. Hemispherical bottom. And a middle part is cylinder. This middle part is the cylinder. Now, the total height of the model is uh, from here to here is 15. But remember, you have to interpret, okay, diameter of the cone is, uh, uh, diameter of the cone, cylinder, and the hemisphere is 6. Diameter of all these is 6. So that means the radius here is 6. The radius is 6. Diameter is 6, so the radius is 3. So that means the radius is, um, the radius is 3. The radius here is 3. And the radius here is also 3. Now, that means from here to here, we need to find this is 8. What about from here to here is the same as the radius? From here to here is, uh, from here to here is the same as the radius, which is also 3. This is also 3. So that means from here up to this point is 8 plus 3, which is 11. From here to here is 11. And then from here to here, we don't know from here, from here to here, we don't know. So, but we can use the linear scale factor, and we need to remember the similarity and enlargement. If I use all the Pythagoras theorem, so if I have three here, you have the slant height. But I have this from here to here, 15, so 15 minus 11, so from here, from here to here, I can say it is 15 minus this is 11, which gives you 4. So I gave 4. I can easily find the slant height here. Because remember, I'm asking that uh, the total external service here of the model in terms of pi. Um, in terms of pi, the service here of the model, this is the curved service here of this conical part, plus curved service here of this, then plus the curved surface of the cylinder. Remember that one, a curved surface, it, this is hemisphere, a sphere it is 4 pi r squared, so hemisphere, so surface area, is this surface of the hemisphere, which is now, hemisphere is a half, a half of 4, four pi r squared, it is 2 pi r squared, then it is plus the area of this, the area of the cylinder part, curved surface of the cylinder, it is 2 pi dh, or 2 pi r squared, 2 pi r h, or pi dh, pi dh. So then plus, the curved surface here is pi r l, pi r l. So I need to find the l here. So the l there, the L, like I've explained, equals to the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is equal to 16 plus 9, the root of 25. This gives me 5 centimeter. So this is equal to 5 centimeter. So that means my total surface area equals to 2 pi, 2 pi times r squared, and r squared is 9, then plus 2 times pi, we have been asking to live in the form of pi, times r is 3, times the edge of the cylinder is 8, then plus pi r, pi, times the r is 2, Three times the L is five times five. So this gives you eighteen pi. Eighteen pi 
plus this is 24 times 2 is 48 pi then finally plus this is 15 by 15 pi so 15 pi if you add all this gives you 81 pi this is 81 pi remember you are dealing with centimeters square the units are very essential but you ask it to give it in form of pi then the next question is that um, so there is a mark there there is a mark for each for each that is for getting this one there is a mark a mark a mark those are three four five marks that's how you score your five marks each and every section this one you get a mark like i always said you get a mark and you get a mark each and every section and also the final answer now that's how you score the five marks and then from there you are asked that you you find the next question is that um, we find part B is that we find now we move to part B we are supposed to find we find the total volume of the model the total volume of the model will have to find the volume of um, this plus the volume of the cylinder plus the volume of the hemisphere and the volume is a third pi r squared plus the volume here is um, pi r squared h plus uh, this uh, hemisphere is 4 over 3 hemisphere now is 2 over 3 pi r cubed for two, uh, because it is uh, a sphere it is 4 over 3 pi r cubed now hemisphere is 2 over 3 pi r cubed is half of the sphere now so total total the total um volume uh, it is uh, volume equals 2 we have said it's 2 over 3 that is for the hemisphere 2 over 3 pi r cubed then we add pi r squared for the cylinder pi r squared h then we add a third then we add a third pi r squared h pi r squared h so that is how we find the volume now we can, we continue and do the calculations now so our volume now becomes uh, 2 over 3 let, let me just have it in uh, 2 over 3 in terms of pi 2 over 3 pi uh, 2 over 3 I can have it as uh, as 2 over 3 times pi times uh, r is 3 squared is 3 cubed 3 cubed gives you 27 3 cubed gives you 27 then plus pi times h is 8 9 times 8 which is 72 9 times 8 is 72 because this 3 squared is 9 times 8 is 72 then plus a third a third times pi times r squared is 9 3 squared is 9 times the h h for the it was 4 that is for the for the conical part the height was 4 so if you multiply all this gives you this gives you uh, 9 times 2 is 18 it gives me 18 pi plus 72 pi plus this is a 3 12 pi so all this if you add it gives you 100 um 102 pi centimeters cubed 
But you have not been told to live in terms of pi. I've been asked to give to two significant figures. So I multiply times um, pi. So I can multiply times uh, 22 over 7, which is the same as 1 or 2. Because I was not told the pi to use 1 or 2 times, so if I use 22 or over 7, this gives me what? If you multiply it by using your calculator, 1 or 2 times 22 over 7, you use your calculator, you find it to be 1 or 2 times 22 over 7 by your calculator. 1 or 2, if you have 1 or 2, 1 or 2 times 22 or over 7, 22 or over 7, you get 320, 320, 320.57.571 but I'm told which is equal to two significant figures this is significant one two one two so it is the rest is zero zero so it's like 320 320 centimeters cubed 320 centimeters cubed. So that is what you are supposed to do for you to score the next five marks. That is very simple on the measurements. There are that that uh, you will be required to use a, a linear scale factor, as method and enlargement. When you are given such a question, you should also be able to do correctly. So we will go to the next question. That is our question number. 19. Question number 19 uh, is a question on um, vectors and mostly dealing with collinearity. So if you, it might not appear like this one exactly where you are dealing with the points, but you might be given a question dealing with collinearity that you have to show that the um, points are collinear. To show that points are collinear, like we said from our previous tutorials, is that um, first of all you have to ensure that uh, they are parallel and to show parallelism we must show that uh, if it is lm lm uh, there is a common multiple if there is a common multiple therefore they are parallel and if they are parallel and there is a common point and therefore they are collinear so i'm going to explain that on how to do this question is talking that we find factor ln but remember here you are told that um, mm, this is origin zero zero origin zero zero and we are told that this point a here point a one six and uh, point p fifteen six respectively point n is on o b point n is on o b on o to b there is a point n um uh, such that three o n we are told that three o n three o n equals two 2OB 2OB so if I deal with this if I can um, have ON ON then 2 you I divide here this ON goes if I bring 2 this other side I divide by 2 here it will be 3 all over 2 equals to OB all over ON this tells me that from O to N, O to N is 2, and then O to B, O to B is 3. So that means N to B is 1. So the ratio of O N to N B is 2 is to 1. That is the ratio of O N to O to N B equals to 2 is to 1. And then I also interpret the other one line O A is produced uh, to L. OA is produced to L say that OL is 3 OA. OL, o, o to L is 3 OA, is 3 OA. 3 OA. So what, what does that mean? It means that um, if I divide by OL, that one, that means if I divide by, that is OL equals to 3 OA 
if I remain with one if I divide by OL I divide by OL so that means I'll have one over one equals two three O A all over O L. I divide by three I divide by three so it means one over three equals two O A all over O L. It means that O L is three from O to L is three and O A is one. O to A is one and O to A is one and O to L is 3, meaning that if the whole thing is 3 and we have from here to here is 1, then that A to L is 2. So the ratio of OA to AL, OA to AL equals 2, 1 is to 2. So that is what it means. Then when you interpret it that way, now you are good to go because I'm asking about LN. I'm asking about L to N. So to get LN, I need the coordinate of L and the coordinate of N. Now, to get the coordinate of L, I use this what I'm given here, the ratio. So that means, even if I use them the way they are here, the way they are here, that is OL, OL equals to 3 OA. So OL, O to L, I don't know. OA, I know. So if I use it the way it is here, I'll say that um, OL, O to L, so I need L, so I can say OL equals to uh, 3 into OA. O to A is 1, 6 if you have it in color vector form. So that means my L, OL factor equals to 3, 18. So that means, remember O is origin 0, 0. So uh, OL is the same as um, L minus 0, 0, which still gives you this one. So that means my coordinate of L is 3, 18. I can also, uh, 3, 18, that is OL. I can also use this uh, same here, the way it is here. I can use the way it is here direct without struggling because I have there. So I can say 3 O N. If I use the way it is or I use this other, this still is okay. Because if I use this that I've found here, I'll say that um, O N O N is 2. 2 over 3 O, uh, o N equals to O to N is 2 over 3 O B. You can say that way. That O N O N equals 2 from here. Because from here to here is 2. O N is 2. The total is 3. 2 over 3 O B. So from there I can find N. The coordinate of N. I can find O N. So if I do this one or use this one direct, you need O N. So O N is two because if I divide by three, it's two over three O B. Two over three O B. Like from here, you divide by three, you divide by three, O N is equals to two over three O B. So we shall have it as two over three O B, which is equal to two or over three of OB. OB is 15.6. You have the column vector. So 2 over 3 times 15. Two, uh, remember this one, 5 times 2 is 10. It gives 10. 2 over 3, this is 2. 3 comes to 6. 2 times 2 times 2 is 4. 10, 4. So we have ON is 10, 4. And for you to get LN is ON minus, it is N minus L. So that is Ln, that's what I'm asked, equals to n minus L, and n is what? Is 10 for, 10 for, minus L is 318. 
so this gives me this is 7 4 minus 18 is negative 14 7 negative 14 so that is what I'm asked 7 negative 14 that is what I'm asked so that is um, vector ln then after getting that vector ln I move further I move further and do the next question and do the next question and the next question is asking about um, is uh, asking that um, given that m is on ln m is on ln uh, such that uh, lm to mn is 3 to 4 is 3 to 4 uh, let me sketch that figure the way it was so you have here there is um, there was this line there is uh, another line here there is uh, Ln here. This is n. Mm, yes. Ln. This is your l. This zero zero of course. And then you are, there was an a here. Okay, we might not be interested with the A. There is a B here. There is a B here, point B. And then you are told that M is on LN. M is on LN. So there is a point M here on LN. Such that LM, LM to MN is 3 is to 4 here. Find the coordinate of M. We find the coordinate of M. So we know that um, this is very simple. Lm. So that means to get my Lm, L to M is 3 over 7 equals to 3 because L to M is 3 all over total is 7 of Ln. And Ln I've found it from above. So Lm, if I let M to be x y so that lm is uh, m minus l that is x minus that of l l we said the x uh, uh, minus 3 that is because the l was l was uh, 318 like we have found from above so x minus 18 and uh, y minus 18 now uh, equals to 3 over 7 of ln 3 over 7 of ln and ln is um, ln is 7 negative 7 negative 14 so that means it means that um this gives this is a 3 so that is means x minus 3 equals to 3 and therefore x equals if you take that one equals to 6 and for the other one y minus 18 equals to 3 over 7 times negative 14 this is negative 2 times uh, gives you three out of a seven or fourteen get it gives me this is a negative two this is a negative two negative six so that means y equals to negative six plus eighteen negative six plus eighteen this gives me twelve so the coordinate coordinate of m coordinate of m in coordinate form is 6, 12. 
612. That is the coordinate. Then from there, they are telling you on the next question that um, uh, OM is produced to T. OM from O to M, this one produced to T. There's a point T there. Okay, let me have it. Uh, let me have that point. A point T. O M is produced to a point T here. This is a point T. M is there. OM is produced to a point T such that OM to MT, OM to MT, it is 6 is to 1. 6 is to 1. Now, they are asking that we find the position factor of T. Position factor of T, if we have um, OM, we know OM, so that means the OM, OM, equals to 6 all over 6 all over the total is 6 plus 1 which is 7 of OT and OM is 6 12 6 12 equals to 6 all over 7 of OT so I need OT I divide by the reciprocal so OT equals to 7 all over 6 times that is a 6, 12. So this one, the reciprocal of that, you find the reciprocal of this, you multiply by both sides, by the reciprocal. So that one, OT gives me, this is a 6 cancels, it means 7, is equal to 7. And uh, 6 here is 2, 14, 7, 14. That is the percent factor of T. So the coordinate of T is the 7, 14. Now I need to show that um, the next question is that I show that um, LTB alkaline, LTB alkaline. Now I need to find maybe I can say LT, I can find LT and um, TB, or somebody can find L, 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 LT and LB. Still is correct. Whichever you find, as long as you show there is a common multiple and there is a common point, common multiple par for parallelism, and a common point, and therefore they are collinear. So I can say that um, LT, I can find LT, and LT is T minus L, that is 214, that is T is 214, minus L, L we had found it is a 318, so if uh, I find this LT, I get it as um, negative. Uh, that is LT. LT. This is seven, not, 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 not seven fourteen, not two seven fourteen. Seven minus three is negative. It is four positive. It is four positive. So I have positive 4 and negative 4. I can also find LB or I find LT and TB. Whichever I find, I'll still get the correct thing. Um, so I can find LT and TB. I can find TB. TB. TB is B minus T and B is... Um, B was given as 16, B was given as um, 15, 6, 15, 6, so it was 15, 6, that was B given, minus T, we have said is 7, 14, so you will find it to be, to be, this is 8, and this is negative 8. So when you find that, you need now to consider between this. I can say that um, I can let uh, 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 let I can let uh, L T to 
be equal to k ktb meaning that uh, lt is a 4 negative 4 equals to k into tb is 8 negative 8 so i can use the upper ones and upper ones alone so that i can say that um, 4 equals to 8k so i divide by 8k equals to half k equals to half so after showing k is half it implies that it implies that it implies that lt it implies that lt equals to a half a half tb you must show this equals to a half tb after showing equals to half tp and therefore you can say therefore therefore lt lt is parallel to tb then from there you can say a statement that since since t in this case it is t and t t is a common point t is a common point is common since t is common point since t is common point you say it implies that uh, therefore ltp l t b are collinear are collinear you write a statement collinear there is no specific answer to this one because another person who used uh, l b and lt could have found a common multiple of three for instance and therefore there is no common answer but the procedure is the same must be shown so that is how you show collinearity and be keen on this question of collinearity be keen on this question of collinearity and uh, all will be well all will be well then we move to the next question the next question we move to the next question We move to the next question. We move to the next question. Now, I move to the next question. That is uh, question number 20. Number 20 uh, is a prediction on... Uh, is a prediction on... Uh, Scale drawing. Three warships, PQR, are at seaside that the uh, ship Q is 400 km on a pairing of these uh, north 30 degrees. This one is called. You have to know how to sketch north 30 degrees from ship P. I'll give you a sketch, then you'll draw on your own the accurate figure. Uh, north 30 degrees east from ship P. Ship R is 706 km from ship Q and on a pairing of south 60 degrees east from ship Q. From ship Q. So first of all, uh, we are thought that uh, uh, QR said that C, uh, uh, at C said that ship Q is 400 km on a pairing of these from ship P. So the starting point is ship P. P. If I have ship P here, this is ship P. I'm told that. Um, Q is 400 km on a pairing of north to the north east. Remember our compass. This is your east, your west, your north, your north, and this is your south. So we are told it is um, north 30 degrees, north the 30 degrees. 30 degrees north 30 degrees to the east so this is where it is here so from there you you, you have a, a sketch like that and then we have your Q here and this one is 400 kilometers and then next ship R is 750 kilometers from ship Q from Q and on a pairing of south 60 degrees east south to the south 60 degrees east so to the south here 60 degrees 
60 degrees east, but 750 kilometers. That is when you go and find your your R. You have to make a sketch, then you draw the accurate. South 60 degrees east. The south and 60 degrees south. It is the south 60 degrees east. This side of east. South 60 degrees east. This is the correct thing. And then we are told that uh, that is you get R. An enemy warship is sighted a thousand kilometers due south of Q, due south of Q, due south of Q, a thousand kilometers, due south of Q. So just straight, straight here, straight here, a thousand kilometers, then we shall have a warship somewhere here, straight, a thousand, if this is a thousand, a thousand, a thousand kilometers, due south of due south of due south of q due south of q from q straight south you've a thousand kilometers remember you're using a scale use a scale drawing to locate the positions of you have not been told the scale so you think of your own scale if i think of um, one kilometer to represent like uh, uh, hundred uh, like one kilometer I mean one centimeter, not kilometer, one centimeter to represent like if I talk of ten kilometer this forty it will be two uh if I talk of ten it would be forty that it would be too big. If I talk of twenty, if I divide four hundred by twenty, or let's talk about a thousand. If I talk of a thousand because that is my biggest, if I divide by twenty, if I divide by twenty, this is fifty, it is still big. If I talk of a hundred, a hundred, a thousand, a hundred, it is ten. So that is correct scale. A hundred kilometer. So that I divide by hundred, this means I'll be measuring four centimeter here. I measure four centimeter here. I'll measure you divide by hundred and measure seven point five centimeter. Seven point five centimeter. That one is uh, and this one I measure ten centimeter. So from there, remember, after drawing, is like you join there, and there is also this one. So this is how the figure should be. This is how it should look like. So after, after you draw the actual, you measure those distances, like use this scale, like the one I've used here. Remember, just locating this point, one, two, three, and four here, you get four marks. Locating the points, this, this, and this point, and this. You score your four marks. Difference between Canvas pairing and true pairing. Canvas pairing and true pairing. So this is uh, whatever given here is uh, true pairing. Canvas pairing is always to the north. It's always uh, from the north and clockwise from the north in a clockwise direction. That is the canvas pairing. Now. Um, from there you are done. From there you scale to locate the distances of this. You can now be sure that if you draw such, you are good to go. From there you are good to go, you will score everything correct. Remember this is a sketch? You have to make a sketch before you draw the actual. So from there you draw the actual and get your 10 marks without struggling. Because the rest is just measurements. Now we go to the next question, number 21. Number 21. The question is talking about um, a bus, a bus and a matatu left void. Both of them left void. They left void, both of them. The bus and the matatu left void. So if I have, uh, can I have something of the kind I call here is a void. So let me say the matatu is here. Matatu, and this is the bus is here. The speed of the bus we are told is what? Uh, remember from here to here is 240 kilometers, we are told it's 240 kilometers from Voi to Mombasa. 240 kilometers, they left at 8, both of them left at 8.00 a.m. They travel at 90 kilometers per hour and 120 km respectively. So that means the pass was going at um, 90 kilometers. And kilometers per hour 
and uh, my tattoo was going at 150, 120, 120 kilometers, kilometers per hour. And then, respectively, after 20 minutes, the matatu had a puncture, which took that minutes to mend. So after 20 minutes, the matatu had a puncture. So they started at the same time. But after 20 minutes, so we must know the distance the matatu had gone for the first 20 minutes. Distance traveled by matatu, uh, first 20 minutes. So the distance by matter to the first 20 minutes, we know that um, speed equals to distance on our time taken. So uh, distance, distance matter to, distance of matter to in 20 minutes, in the first 20 minutes, it will be equal to the speed of the matter is 120 times the time is 20. Remember, we're doing kilometers per hour, so you change to per hour divided by 60. So you multiply that, you get that uh, distance to be 40 kilometers. So it went 40 kilometers. The matter went 40 kilometers. And I got a bandage. Got a there. And then remember the bus continued to move. And then we are told that um, it took 50 minutes there. No, it took 30 minutes there to start going again. <laughs> so remember now from here to here is 20 minutes. We need to know that the the from the starting point because we are told we need to note where the bus was where the bus was by the time by the time the matatu is starting again by the time uh, distance bus uh, distance of bus in 50 minutes now because remember there is that minutes the, the, the matatu had stopped distance because it is going to start going again after after the bus had gone for 50 minutes so distance Distance of bus in 50 minutes because it shall have gone 50 minutes before the matter to start again. So, uh, uh, in 50 minutes, it's the speed of the bus 90 times 50 or over 60 times 50 over 60. So, it had gone 75. Kilometers. Now, if it had gone 75 kilometers and this had covered uh, 40 kilometers, so the distance the matatu must cover for it to distance, um, competing distance, the distance the matatu must run for it to catch up. Distance matatu must run, distance matatu must run to catch. Distance matatu must run to catch, distance to catch, to catch. This distance for it to run to catch it is the 75 that the matter to had gone minus the 40 that um, the 40 that uh, this had covered this gives you 35 35 kilometers that five kilometers so that means that is the competing distance and therefore we can find the time taken to relative speed. Our relative speed, when they move to the same distance, we subtract. It is 120 minus 90. This gives you 30 kilometers per hour. And therefore, if you have the relative speed and the distance that must be run, uh, that the method must run to catch, how far from what did the uh, did they, they catch up with the bus? Did it take catch up the matter to catch up with the bus? So we need to find time taken to catch up, time taken to catch, time taken to, to catch, time taken to catch up, to catch up, catch up equals to the competing distance. 
computing distance which is 35 all over the route speed which is 30 hours which is the same as 35 if you divide by 30 you get one point I said that uh, when you get one point like this is 35 we divide by 30 you get 1.16 so 1.16666 1.16666 so it's the same 0 0.1666 that's one hour and is this 0 0.1666 you times you need to times you need to times 60 you get like 10 minutes so it's like one hour one hour 10 minutes one hour 10 minutes so that is the time that it must how far from void did the uh, uh, did the bus catch up now distance from void distance from void remember it was from void the distance it ran to catch up it must run up for 35 out of 30 hours which is the same as 7 over uh, this is 5 is 7, 7 over 6 hours so it must run for 7 over 6 hours for it to catch up now from VOI distance from VOI equals to the distance 40 kilometers already the method covered 40 kilometer plus the distance it must run to catch up which is um, we know the distance is speed times uh, time the speed it was moving is 120 times the time must run to catch up is one hour and ten minutes which is seven over over six so this gives you uh, one eight kilometers this 40 plus uh, this is uh, what this is one this is one uh, 20 and that's 140 40 kilometer plus 140 kilometers this gives you 180 kilometers this is the distance that uh, the this is the distance how far from void did the catch up from void it catched uh, uh, the bus at 180 kilometers from void so that is how you are supposed to do it that's how you are supposed to do it that is how you are supposed to do it. That is how you are supposed to do this work. That is how you are supposed to do this question. That is how you are supposed to do this question. Then you score your six marks uh, very easily. Then the next question is, uh, yes, we shall use what we have found, so you need to remember them. Uh, the next question is that we find... Um, the next question we are asking to find at what time did the matatu catch up with the bus at what time did the mother to catch up with the bus? Remember, we need to know that um, time uh, uh, the mother to catch up with the bus. They started at eight. So if they started at eight, at eight zero zero, then it took plus uh, the time it took. It took from. Um, from the voy from voy remember it had gone for 20 minutes and then it stopped for 30 minutes so we find that 50 minutes we add the 50 minutes then we add the time it took after starting now to run again for it to catch it up it was one hour and ten minutes like we have found from above 10 minutes then we add all this, we get this is 850 plus this um, 850 uh, plus, remember this 850, this and this gives one hour. 
and then you have 8, this is 9, it will be 10, zero, zero. It will be a 10, if you add all this, it gives you 10, zero, zero, AM. That is the time, at what time? That's 10, zero, zero, AM, that's when it catched up with the, 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 the bus. At what time did the, the, the bus not build? reach Mombasa. The bus, at what time did it reach Mombasa? So, at what time did the bus reach Mombasa? So we need to find the time taken. Time taken equals to total distance, which was 240. It was moving at 90 kilometers per hour. So it took two hours. Two hours. It took two hours and 40 minutes. Two hours and 40 minutes. If you divide by that. 40 minutes. So if you took two hours and 40 minutes and it started at 8, it started at 8.00. Zero zero. So if you add two hours and 40 minutes, you will find it uh, 10.40. 10.40. So it reached Mombasa at, at 10.40 a.m. These other questions were very simple. They were very simple. You are very simple. So um, after you understand that, you are good to go. Now we go to the next question. Remember this question can be a graph. It can be drawn. It, can, it might appear as a graph. Then you are asked to find uh, uh, maybe the total distance. If it is velocity time graph, total distance is the area of the curve. Area under curve gives you total distance. Or you can be given the some total distance. You are asked to find the final velocity, the velocity um where the matatu started running or whatever so you just manipulate that graph like i did from my previous tutorials question number 22 is on profits and losses um profits and losses we are told that um the ratio of two miles and akini's earnings was five is to three five is to three um uh five is to three and then we are told that um that is juma to akini Juma to Akini, the ratio equals to 5 is uh, to 3. Then we are told that uh, Chuma's earning lost to 8,400 after an increase of 12%. 12%. So Juma's original, so we need to know Juma's original earning. Juma original earning. Original. Original earning. Because it rose to this this was 112 what about 100 so it was 100 originally it was 100 all over 112 that is that it became this times 8400 so the original earning of chuma is 5000 7000 i mean 500 7000 you multiply that by using your calculator you get 7000 500. Then we need a king's original earning. Correct the percentage increase in a king's earning given that the sum of their new earning was this. So the sum of their new earning from here, first of all, a king, because remember the, the ratio of Jumas and a king's earning was 5 is to 3. So a king's original earning is 3. Remember, five is this. What about three? It's three over five times this. So a key original earning, a key original earning, original earning, original earning is a three all over five times seven thousand five hundred. This gives you four thousand five hundred. Those were the original. Then we are asking that um, now we need to know the Akin new earning because Akin new earning we are told about Juma's new earning as this Akin new earning we need to know Akin new earning the Akin Akin new earning new earning equals to Akin new earning remember it rose to to 14,100. It is the the new sum was 14,100 minus the new earning for Juma that is 
so this gives you 5,700 5, that is a key new earning then uh, we need to know that um, we calculate the percentage Calculate the percentage increase in Akinyi's earning given that the sum of the new earning percentage increase in Akinyi percentage increase in Akinyi equals to the new earning which is 5700 the new earning is 5700 minus the original earning that is was 4500 all over the original earning which was 4500 4500 then times 100 times 100 so this one gives you if you subtract that you get 1200 divided by 4500 then times 100 this gives you 26 and when it is recurring 26.66666 when it's recurring and show you write in fraction form it is 26 and uh, two third when it uh, recurs and show you write in fraction form as 26 and uh, two third percent and sure you write in fraction form when it it recurs when it recurs and sure you write in fraction form so that is how you are supposed to do to tackle that question that is how you are supposed to tackle that question now, part B of the question is that Juma and Akinyi contributed all the new earnings to buy maize at 1,175 shillings per kg. The maize was then sold at, um, uh, at um, 1,762.50 cents per bag. Uh, the two shared all the money from the sales of the maize in the ratio of their contribution. Can get the amount that Akinyi got? Now, what you do, first of all, to know this is that um, we need to know the number of bags, the number of bags, the number of bags that they had. So to get the number of bags that they had here, to get the number of, of bags that they had, number of bags, number of bags, the number of bags that they had equals to the total contribution was um, the total earning was because the king got all the new earnings. The new earnings of total contribution were the new earnings were 14,000. The new earnings were 14,000 from the above. We noted that the new earnings were, we were told they were 14,100. Remember, they bought each pack at 1,175. So if you divide by using your calculator, you'll find it to be 12 bags. So they had 12 bags. Then we are said we are told that they sold the maize at uh, uh, so amount amount sold the amount they sold is uh, how much amount amount sold amount sold equals to the twelve bags times each bag that was costing uh, one thousand seven hundred sixty two uh, point fifty cents one thousand seven sixty two Point five zero. If you multiply that, you get um, the amount they got is twenty one thousand one hundred and fifty. Now, that is Kenyan shillings, of course. Then, um, that's the amount sold. So we are asking that uh, we, the two shared all the, so the ratio of contributions, the ratio of contribution were. The ratio of contribution was, uh, he contributed the new earning for Juma was, that is Juma to Akinyi, Juma to Akinyi, uh, to Akinyi was 84, Juma was 8400, and Akinyi new earning was, Akinyi new earning was 5700. Uh, we simplify this, these two, these two, it is 84 to 57. 84 to 57 you can use it as that or just you simplify further and get 28 is to 19 28 is to 19 
So if that was the, now we are asking to find this, you add the 2, you get 47, this and this is, total is 47. So we are asking to find that, um, how much Akinyi got, Akinyi got 19, Akinyi, Akinyi, Akinyi got 19, that is his contribution, all over, 57, the total was 57, not 57, but 47. 28 plus 19 is 47. Out of 47. Then times the amount 21, 150 times 21, 150. That is the amount they sold. So you will get it as 8,550 8, shillings. 550 shillings. Kenyan shilling, eight thousand five hundred and fifty. So that is the amount Akini got. Amount Akini got. Now we go to the next question number twenty-three. The next question number twenty-three. The next question number twenty-three is talking about um, the next question number twenty-three. We look at it, uh, the question is talking about uh, uh, mid-ordinate rule. So we need to remember mid-ordinate rule. Mid-ordinate rule. Use mid-ordinate rule with five strips to estimate the area pounded by the curve. Y equals to x plus 3x uh, power negative 1. The x-axis, the line x equals to 1 and x equals to 6. Now what you do, we need to find the height. The height that we use, h equals to x2 minus x1, that is 6 minus 1, all of the number of strips, which is 5. So this gives you 5 all over 5. So we need now to make the table of x. So I need x, I need the midpoint, so that I use the midpoint to find y. Now, I can use, this equation can be written as y equals to x plus 3 all over x. This is the same because we know that 1 all over a equals to a power negative 1. So that is the same concept here. So um, x, you start with 1, because the difference is 1, 1, we go to 2, 3, Four, five, six. We find the midpoint is three divided by two. It is one point five. This five, which is two point five. This is seven. Is three point five. And then uh, this is nine. Four point five. 11 is 5.5 .5. so now this is what we use we use these values of the midpoints to find the values of y we substitute 1.5 is so the first one 1.5 plus 3 all over 1.5 just press in your calculator you find it is a 3.5 the next you find 2.5 plus 3 all over 2.5 you get it as 3.7 now that I'm writing in one decimal place, I write everything in one point decimal places. Like the next is 4.3 and some so many points, so I round off to 4.4, that is one decimal place. The next is 4.5 plus 0 of 4.5, you get 5.2 to one decimal place, and next is 6.0 and so many others, so you one decimal place. So from there you find the area. We know that area equals to H into Y1 plus Y2 plus, plus up to up to Y up to Y up to Y we move that up to y so uh, we move up to y 
up to y n minus 1 no up to y n not n minus 1 so up to y n that is the last y so we add all of them and then the height so our height is 1 into now we add all this 3.5 plus 3.7 plus 4.4 plus 5.2 plus 6.0 if you add all this you will get it as 22.8 22.8 square you must write square units because you have not been told how many units are there and the area should be squared square units so after getting the area we move to the next point that uh, we are using integration integration um, integration still you do the same oh, okay let me let me let me do just here by integration we find by integration we integrate from 6 1 we integrate we can integrate when it is in this form not in this form so it is uh, we integrate x plus 3 x power negative 1 with respect to dx so that means 6 1 if you integrate this is uh, x squared over 2 because the x equals power 1 you add 1 becomes 2 or over 2 the new power then plus this is negative 1 plus 1 is 0 0 or over 0 it is infinity so it is um, 3 times uh, this is a uh, 1 is 3 or over 0 so it is 3 over 0 3 over 0 which is the same as infinity so it's the same as just between 6 and 1 we deal with x squared or over 2 alone so the area becomes the area becomes 6 we square which is equal to 6 squared 6 squared or over 2 whatever you get you minus for 1 1 squared or over 2 so this one you get it as uh, 36 is 18 minus half so this gives you 17 17 and a half square units that is by by integration by integration then from there the next question will be the percentage error calculate the percentage error in area when midnight rule is used when midnight rule is used for percentage error you just get this one you subtract this one you divide by the actual is taken to be the one for integration is the actual so divided by the one for integration times times 100 so I can easily say percentage error if I calculate part C here if I calculate part, uh, part C here and call percentage error it is uh, now 22.5.8 minus 17.5 divided by 17.5 then times 100 so percentage error becomes 5.3 if you subtract is 5.3 5.3 divided by 17.5 times 100 this gives you 30.29 30.29% so that was the percentage error 
in using midonet rule. So these are very simple question. When you are given either trapezium rule, midonet rule, whichever you are told, it is a very simple question. You should be able to do it and get all the answers correctly and get all the answers correctly because this is a very simple question for you to score 10 marks. You are not struggling. You are just adding numbers. You are just adding numbers for middle natural or even trapezium rule because either of them can appear and it's not uh, thematic that it has to but then you need to know because it can appear even paper two either in paper one or paper two so that is what you are supposed to do then we go to the last question number 24 number 24 uh, you expect such a question that is a uh, turning point and turning point number 24 we deal with turning points. Now you are, you are asked that um, the equation of a curve is given by y equals to x cubed minus 4x squared plus dx. You find the x-intercept. We understand that at x-intercept, at, at x-intercept, intercept, we know that y equals to 0. So it means that it means that all this equation will rise to zero. X cubed minus four x squared plus three x will rise to zero. So here we can factor out x. It can be x into it comes here x squared minus four x. Then it is plus three equals to zero. So this means that x equals to zero or or x squared minus four x plus three equals to zero. This one it is a quadratic equation. We use um, the factor method because the sum is negative four, the product is three, and the factors are negative three and negative one. Negative three plus negative one is negative four. Negative three times negative one, it is three positive. So we use it. Uh, it will be x squared. X squared minus now we replace this one with now the negative three x. It is negative three x and negative uh, negative. Uh, and negative x because it's negative one. So we replace with minus three x, then minus x, then plus three equals to zero plus three equals to zero. So we go this two and these two. So here we shall have x is common factor. We factor there. Uh, x comes here. X then we minus three, then minus. Uh, the common factor is 1. 1 here is uh, x. There is a negative change. This one to become minus 3. In simple terms, this whatever is inside the bracket must be similar. Then equals to 0. So that means your x minus 1 equals to 0 or x minus 3 equals to 0. So x equals to 1 or x equals uh, equals uh, to 3. So that means the curve will cut the x-axis in three places. It will cut it at x equals to 0. It will also cut it at x equals to 1 and at x and and at x it will also cut it at, at x equals to 3. So these are the x-intercepts. You get your two marks. Then the y-intercept is um, when x is zero. So at y-intercept, x is zero. So it means what? Uh, at y-intercept, y-intercept, at y-intercept, at y-intercept, x is zero. So if x is zero, it means that. Um, at y intercept x is zero, so that means that um, y equals to uh, uh, zero cubed minus four times zero squared 
then plus uh, 3 times uh, 0 so all this gives y equals to 0 y equals to 0 that's one mark determine the stationary points the stationary points we know at the stationary points that uh, dy all over dx will be equal to 0 so it means dy if we in, 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 for example, this one gives 3x squared 3x squared then minus this is 8x 8x then plus 3 would be equal to 0 so this is a quadratic equation this one um, there is no you cannot factor because there is no common factors because the sum is negative weight and the product is 9 and there, is, there are no common factors and therefore we can um, fact, uh, we can use uh, the formula method so it is minus b to get x equals to minus b which is minus minus 8 is 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 64 64 minus 4 is c minus 4 times uh, this is 12 times uh, c is um, so we are minusing 36 all over 2a 2a is this 2 times 3 is 6 so that means that means that uh, we can have 8 plus or minus the square root of 28 which gives uh, this is the square root of 28 which gives 5.2 5.29 Two, that is for significant figures or over six so meaning that uh, my x so it implies that my x is what my x equals two when you add you divide by six it gives two point uh, two point uh, two one five or all zero point four five zero point four five one three so if that is the value of x then when x is this what is y when x when x the stationary point when x is a uh, uh, two point uh, two one five so you substitute y would be equal to you substitute here and get your y as um, you get your y as a negative when it is two point it becomes negative two point uh, uh, one one or one 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 but you just write two decimal so the uh, okay you can write uh, the one one three like it is one one three uh, so that the point now the stationary point in that case stationary point the stationary point is um, so this is point what stationary point is uh, two point uh, two one five and negative two point one one three. So that is the stationary point. Then you also look for the stationary point when x that is when uh, x equals to zero zero point four five one three you find y so y you substitute you will find if you substitute y here you substitute x is 0 0.4513 use your calculator you substitute this x you find y to be uh, y to be 0 0.6 0 0.6311 so the point is what the stationary point is uh, the point becomes uh, 0 0.4513 and 0 0.6311 so that is the stationary point so these are the two stationary points that you are asked so after you've got the two stationary points we go to the next question that uh, we determine the nature of the points the nature of the points we differentiate for the second time uh, if we differentiate for the second time and then we substitute that value that we get the value of x in the in the second differential equation 
uh, if it is a negative, that is a maximum. If it's a positive, it's a minimum. If a post positive is a minimum. So we can read practically here. That is, um, and if it is zero, it's a point of inflection. So uh, that is what we do. That we determine the nature of the points, the nature of the points. We determine the nature of the points. Remember, uh, you determine the nature of the points. Then from there you sketch the curve. You sketch the curve. The nature of the points. From there you sketch the curve. Now we move. Determine the, whether the points is maximum or minimum. Whether it's maximum or minimum. What you do in this case, eh, to determine whether it's maximum or minimum. So the second, that is uh, D, um, second differential over D, if you differentiate for the second time. Our equation, you differentiate it the second time, you find it as a 6, because it was, originally it was um, the first differential, you, we found it to be, that is dy all over dx, we find it to be dy all over dx, we found it to be 3x squared, 3x squared minus 8x plus 3 minus 8x plus 3. Now you differentiate for the second time, it becomes 6 x minus 8. Now, we substitute when x is 2 point, when x, and see, when x equals 2, that is the, the point, uh, the point uh, 2.2, um, 2 .2, there was that point 2.215, 2.215, you substitute here, and then you will find you find d the second differential, uh, the second differential to be what? You find the second differential when you substitute to be equal to positive, you get a positive number. So if it is a positive number, hence, hence it means that the point, hence the point um, two point two one five. Or just call it 2.2 and then uh, negative 2.113 is uh, a, a maximum point is a, if it's positive if, if it's positive is a minimum point it's a minimum point it is a minimum point and then you do the same for you substitute for uh, when x when x that is for the next point that it was x equals to 0 0.45 x equals to 0 0.4513 you substitute here you get uh, the second differential the second differential you will find it to be negative if you find it to be negative so hence uh, hence the point Hence, the point that is the point is zero point four five um, and zero point six three is maximum. It's a maximum point. So you need that just to do that. Then you sketch the curve. For you to sketch the curve, you need the turning points, the y-intercepts. So y intercept, y intercept we found it to be y intercept is zero. That is, and the x intercept so we found it to be zero. Uh, x one, and x was three. That is the x intercept. And then you also need to turning points. The turning points, points is. Um, these are the turning points you have here. Uh, the minimum, the maximum is the minimum. The maximum 0 0.45. 0 0.45. If I use two decimal places, 0 0.45 and uh, 0 0.63. That is the maximum. 0 0.63. And I also have another point uh, 
minimum this is the maximum minimum is uh, uh, two point uh, two two and the negative uh, two point one one so if I have this as a minimum here if I have all this then I'm able to sketch because I'll do the X and this is the Y I know that uh, Y there is a negative 2 somewhere here so if I call this a negative, negative 2.11 I also have uh, all the rest there is a 0 there is X at 1 there is this, this, the, this is the X and this is the X so there is a, a zero point, I can call it this zero point four five. There is also a, a, a what? A two point two, there is a one of course, there is a one for x, there is a, a three and a two point, a two point, uh, a two point two, there is also a three. Now, we know that uh, the, for the y's is zero. There is a y which is negative 2.2 this, okay. There is also a y which is uh, 0 0.63. So there is a 0 0.63 here, 0 0.63. So a 0 0.63, that is the turning point. So let us look for this point, 0 0.45, 0 0.45, and 0 0.63. So this is uh, our maximum point. And then we also look for this point 2.22, 2.22, and a negative 2 point. So it is 2.22, 2.22, and a negative. So it's around here. And then there is also this is the turning, the, the, the y intercept. So it will cut the x intercept, remember. The y x intercept, there is a zero. There is. Um, a one and a three so it must come the curve comes from from this side so that it goes through through the zero here it makes a turning at this point you make sure you make a good sketch a turning at that point it goes through the x intercept which is one it goes to the minimum point which is uh, this it turns and goes through the x intercept which is three so this is how you sketch the graph very simple without struggling very simple without struggling and then you score your full 10 marks so this is my prediction for this year i wish you all the best and i know you'll get that a that you've been longing for and god shall be with you as you sit for this, this paper on monday and I assure you that you are going to do it well because you've been prepared well by your teachers and I'm sure you have the ability. God be with you as you sit for the paper. Thank you and remember to subscribe for me. Thank you.